And as I have said, I am not trading Ben Simmons for another Tobias Harris. I am trading Ben Simmons for a guy that can consistently create his own shot. I'm trading Ben Simmons for a guard that can come in here and provide instant offense. I'm, I'm trading Ben Simmons for that guy I can have confidence in for that last second shot. Because even with Joel Embiid, much as I love the guy, I'd much rather see that ball in the hands of a guard who can create his own shot and knock it down when the game's on the line. When I look at Joel Embiid, hey, in the final minute of the game, I want the ball in his hands as much as possible. But when it comes to that last second shot, I wanted that to be in the hands of a guard that could create his own shot. The Sixers have not really had that guy in quite some time. As much as I like Seth Curry, we talked about him yesterday. I don't have confidence in him to really create his own shot as many times as you can with a guy like, obviously, Dame Lillard. And I know that's the fish of wish scenario, but I'm comparing it to Connor Brogdon is what I'm doing. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon, excuse me. So that's what I'm looking at right now as far as that deal would go with the Pacers. And then the next one uh, it involves a sign and trade with uh, Kyle Lowry and the Toronto Raptors. And that's pretty much a straight-up deal, as uh, as um, David Murphy points out in his column. Raptors, Pacers, Timberwolves, Kings, and, of course, the Cavaliers. All these deals, with the exception of, uh, who did I have on here? The Timberwolves. Uh, all these deals are uh, conversations. They're not deals that I think are slam dunks. And the one deal, as it comes with the Timberwolves, I'm just like, thanks, but no thanks. See you later. I got no interest. And it all comes down to the fact that I think that the Sixers are in a scenario, and Daryl Morey will get that tunnel vision where he says, yeah, okay, well, if I can get Dame Lillard, I'm getting Dame Lillard. If I can't get Dame Lillard, then Ben Simmons isn't going anywhere. And you can look at the situation that played out with James Harden and that deal. They tried to unload him. James Harden basically and the, the the Rockets ended up saying thanks, but no thanks, and going with the deal that the Nets put on the table. It was laser focus. It wasn't like, okay, James Harden's down. Now let's go get Zach Levine or somebody. It was That was the guy that was targeted. There was no backup plan. You know why? Because there was no plan on the same level. That's When you get into a backup plan, you start thinking of a lot more along the lines of, well, let's make a deal just to make a deal. I think, as we talked about with Allah Abdel Nabi yesterday, that this is salvageable if Ben Simmons is willing to put in the work. And really, the future of the franchise now is not all on Joel Embiid's knees or his load management or whatever it might be. The future of the 76ers franchise right now still lies in the work that Ben Simmons is willing to do in the offseason. And I told you many times, I'm not going to look at the, the videos. Well, I'm going to look at the videos. I'm just not going to care about the videos. Uh, I'm not going to say, oh, well, there we go. We, the Ben Simmons problem solved because here he is you know, shooting in a pickup game or in practice, whatever. Or here he is installing a basketball hoop at the $17.5 million mansion that he bought outside Los Angeles. I'm not going to be convinced of anything until I see it in an NBA game during the regular season with consistency. That's right. He could come out the first game of the season, knock down a three, and I'll be like, okay, cool. Let's see what happens over the next 10 games. Let's see what happens over the next 20 games after that. All right, let's see what happens over the next 82 games. But I'm not going to be convinced until I see it on a very consistent basis. And guess what? I'm not even really going to be convinced until I see it in the postseason. So the future of the NBA, the future of the Sixers franchise right now solely depends on Ben Simmons and how hard he's willing to work. Uh, as, until he's traded, it all depends on how hard he's willing to work, to put in the work, to, to improve his game and take it to the next level. Because here's what flies out the window throughout this, it, it, leading up to a trade or next season. Here's what flies out the window. Any defense of Ben Simmons being a great defender, being a great facilitator, uh, a three-time All-Star, whatever you, whatever argument you want to bring up, arguments that I brought up to defend Ben Simmons' value to this team. All of it goes out the window because all that matters is how he plays in the playoffs. If he shows signs of making the, that improvement like he did in February, hell, it's 28, 15 games, whatever how many games he played in February, uh, 11 games, as a matter of fact. Uh, in February, where he was shooting over 70% from the free throw line. He was scoring over 20 points per game. That's the guy you can win a championship with. It's it's not going to take much much more of an improvement from Ben other than a willingness to do so, because I believe he can physically do it. It's all up here for him. If he can get enough confidence in his shot to take his uh, game to the next level, then we're going to be talking about a much different story. Then we're talking about the guy I've talked about many, many times. In terms of, I just saw Luigi's comment was still up there. Sorry. Uh, that's the guy we could talk about many, many times as being a guy could be a legit MVP candidate. 